This is an extract from the Leader Coronavirus Daily podcast by The Evening Standard and hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for it on your podcast provider. Good morning. I'm sorry I've been away from my desk for much longer than I would have liked. It's been 22 days since Boris Johnson was admitted to hospital with COVID-19, almost the entire month of April. He was visibly thinner. The microphone sometimes picked up heavier breathing than normal. But it was clear that this was a prime minister determined to show he's back in charge. If this virus were a physical assailant, an unexpected and invisible mugger, which I can tell you from personal experience it is, then this is the moment when we have begun together to wrestle it to the floor. Our editorial column is pleased to see his return, but also wants to see decisions being made quickly. Welcome back, Prime Minister. You're needed, and this morning, speaking outside Downing Street, you showed why. Only a Prime Minister has the authority to lead us out of lockdown. But for anyone hoping that normal life will return soon, his message was bleak. I can see the long-term consequences of lockdown as clearly as anyone. And so, yes, I entirely share your urgency. It's the government's urgency. And yet we must also recognise the risk of a second spike. He showed the necessary caution of a wartime leader, but he also revealed how much is missing. He couldn't tell us what will happen next because he does not know. He has returned to find the government doesn't have a plan to get out of this. It needs to find one. The Evening Standard's associate editor, Julian Glover, watched the Prime Minister's speech and he's with me over the phone now. Julian, did Boris Johnson give the public what it needed to see with his return to work? When the door opened of number 10 this morning, we didn't just want to hear what the Prime Minister had to say. We also wanted to see what he looked like, how he was after his terrible ordeal with coronavirus and he did very very well it's extremely difficult to come out of a building in the middle of a crisis give a sense of reassurance a sense of firm leadership of clarity and he did all of those things even his critics will have been impressed but it only holds for a day or so because what he couldn't do is tell us what's going to happen next he could tell us what isn't going to happen. He's not about to lift the lockdown. And he gave some of the reasons why it would be dangerous. Infections rates would spike again. We haven't got through this. There's a separate battle, of course, about whether we could have locked down earlier. We could have contained the virus and we might have been able to start lifting restrictions as other countries in Europe are beginning very tentatively to do. But that's not the time for this battle. What we need to know is what's going to happen next. Julian, were there any hints at all in what he was talking about outside Downing Street today about what will happen next? So he said he'd be more transparent. Well, we'll find out how that happens. He said he'll work with the opposition. Well, people always say that, and then it turns out to be tough. And he said in the next few days, we will hear more about the plan. Not dates, probably. Definitely not an impending lifting of very many restrictions at all, but at least the structure of how this is going to happen. And it is fair to ask that. It's what the Evening Standard is asking for, looking for the London after lockdown we want to see. Not because it's going to come straight away, but because we have to plan for it now. It's what Michael Heseltine writes about in the comment pages of the Evening Standard today. And it's what the Prime Minister is going to have to get his officials and his ministers to work on. Clearly a lot has gone on while he's been away. He's been away for almost the entirety of April. So Dominic Raab has had to make a number of decisions himself. Why do we need the Prime Minister back? Because while he's been away, there's been a lot of hard work by people involved in testing and developing the app that maybe we'll carry to, to judge whether it's, uh, it's safe to go out, whether we've met somebody, come into contact accidentally with somebody who might be an infectious coronavirus patient. These things are all happening. People are working really hard. I've talked to officials involved, but what there isn't is that person at the top drawing it all together, saying, this is the plan. This is what we need to know. This is what we've got to tell people. This is how it's going to happen. It hasn't worked. The cabinet can't do that. It isn't how Britain's structured. There needs to be a leader. That's Boris Johnson's job. It's going to be a very tough one. He'll come in for a lot of criticism. It's 
going to be hard when he's recovering from an incredibly serious medical condition and he hasn't had long to recover. But that's what happens if you're Prime Minister. It's what he started doing today. He came out of it well this morning. He's going to have to keep coming out of it well day after day because this is going on, as he said, for a very long time. This is an extract from the Leader Coronavirus Daily podcast by The Evening Standard and hosted by me, David Marsland. To hear the whole thing, search for it on your podcast provider.